first, can you state your name? You'll you'll look at me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your name and, and your title, your job title. Uh, my name is Paul Brody. I am the president and founder of Brody Edu. I am also a special education teacher for the Hearsfields Bedford Independent School District, and I've taught for the last eight years. Okay. Where is that at? Um, H E B Hearsfields Bedford, Texas, uh, between Fort Worth and Dallas. Okay. okay. What inspired you to write Motivation 101? Well, you know, I think the main thing about motivation is we all need it. We all have to figure out how we're going to make it through the day. And one of the biggest things I talk about is starting the day off right. Whether that's cappuccino, whether that's music, spending time with your family, really focusing on the main things that are going to motivate you to get the day started right and to continue to build that momentum through the day. Listen to the right music, reading the right books, um, going on the right websites, and really doing that and focus on things to motivate you and help not only yourself, but to help others as well. Okay, great. Um, how long did it take you to write it? Uh, Motivation 101 took me about two weeks, but prior to that, I've worked on a seminar for years. Uh, it's gone back several years, and I created the seminar back in 2013. So it was something that was always in my head. It was just getting it out there and getting it from the seminar to get it out on paper as well. So during that week process, I had everything outlined, and we get everything knocked out. So everything was free flowing. Okay, great. Um, how long have you been a writer? Uh, one year. I actually started in June of 2015, and since then I've written four books, and my fifth one's launching next month called The Pursuit of Happiness, which we're also going to be covering in the seminar today. Okay. Um, anything else that you want people to know, whether it's about um, themselves or about the book? Well, I mean, I think really one of the things we talk about today is our greatest opponent, and our greatest opponent is ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not your enemy, it's not your boss, it's not any type of opponent except for yourself. That is the biggest challenge that we have is against ourselves every day, and really becoming our greatest champion and focusing on the light side versus the dark side, and really focusing on a positive mindset, being motivated, and pursuing that happiness that we all want to do. Okay, great. Thank you. That Absolutely. I need to get this done. So within three days after coming back from Las Vegas, early July, I wrote a book. And then after that, I've written three more. And the mentality with that is just do it. What are you waiting for? Why, what are you waiting to do? What are you waiting to pursue in life that's holding you back? What about you guys? What do you think? No, these, these guys know that. What, what's something that you guys want to pursue right now that's holding you back a little bit? Studying, so procrastinating a little bit. How many, how many of you guys do this study right from pregnant to four tests? That's all I got through college. So it's really just getting to that road <coughs> and just doing it. So this was my motivation to stay healthy. This was me five years ago, this was four years ago, and this was last year. And that was my motivation because you see that guy over there is in pretty rough shape. And I have to find that motivation and that mentality just to do it to get on with it, to get healthy. And I did that, I changed my life, and I know it's an easy thing to do. And my own motivation was to get older. So last year I turned 40, big 4-0. So of course, these are any other 40 year old guy does, I went and got a couple tattoos. I was like, why not? So I was going to get two things for the things I love, and one was the star, with Texas, my company, my alumni chapter, and then the trouble about the music, because that's all I got in there. And yes, that is even grimacing in pain, thinking, what the heck did I do? Why did I get this tattoo? How many of you guys have tattoos? So y'all know what I'm talking about, right? It is an experience. So that was my motivation to get older because these pictures would not have happened if I wouldn't have taken control of my life and just did it and made those health changes. I honestly believe if I would have kept the way I was going, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys today. So that was one of my big motivations. And then again, motivation and passion for education. And that's the thing, how many of you guys are passionate about education? How many of you guys want to be teachers and educators? You know, I strongly, strongly recommend pursuing that dream. Because again, there is nothing better than giving back. And again, teaching, the profession that curates all other professions. How many of you guys had a teacher before that made a difference in your life? Hopefully most of this room, right? What was the name of your teacher? The circle of trust. We have to have people that will be there for us that we can vent to and we can trust there for us. And this is my circle of trust. And then, of course, my main motivation is family. Who here has family that they would do anything for? And I would see every hand up. For me, family is everything. My sister, my dogs, my cat, my mom, who I actually have the honor to take care of. Of course, you can see.
saying the word take care of, but it's, um, she's 78. And we actually had a little house here a couple weeks ago. I actually had to take her to the hospital, which was uh, pretty scary. Blood pressure was up to 231. So it's pretty high. I had a chance to get pneumonia. And the reason I bring that up is when you have things like that happen, you really understand what matters most in life. And it's not about the next paycheck. It's not about the next car. It's not about the next promotion. It's about taking care of those that you care about the most. Whether that's your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your dog, your cat, your mouse, whatever you want to call it. But it's all the people you care about. So let's talk a little bit about the power of music. Who here has a song that they use to wake up in the morning? Okay, what do you listen to? Shut up and dance. All right. I saw some hands over here. Put your hands up again. How about you? Good morning. I love that song. It makes me sleepy when I hear it. What about you? Did you have any? Okay. What about you? Nice. What about you? Imagine here, not the morning, first thing you wake up, start going, get ready to take on the day. I use this for working out and also for waking up first thing in the morning. <coughs> But I'll also talk about some other songs. For instance, driving to school. Who has a mix when they're driving to work in the morning? So driving here to St. Cloud. Anybody? What about you? What do you listen to? Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Let me show you what I listen to in the morning. <laughs> you laugh about it. This is what I go through in the morning. I'm driving to work. I'm going like this, get through.
we got to get and keep moving forward. Because that's how winning is done. When you get dragged down, you get punched through the ground, you keep getting up. Perseverance, determination. Because that way you don't quit, that's how winning is done. Any questions on that? Yes, sir? Oh. <laughs> All right. But at the end of the day, who is our greatest opponent? Ourselves, right? It's not our boss. It's not our brothers. It's not our classmates. It's not our friends. It's not our enemies. It's us. At the end of the day, our greatest opponent's in the mirror. Because that is the person who matters the most. It is your perception of yourself, which is the greatest thing. So if you think of yourself, it is the most important thing in your life, and you control that. Because again, at the end of the day, it's you versus you. All right. And again, finding your purpose in life. How many of you guys are still looking for your life's purpose? Probably a lot of you guys, right? Especially those who are in college. You still got a ways to go to find that, and you have plenty of time to do so. But for March 20th, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you found out why. And I found out why on Valentine's Day 2008, when I took my very first substitute teaching assignment. It was in Arlington at a junior high uh, called Naples Junior High. And I actually substitute taught the choir. And I figured, I took this great thing of faith months previous, and this is either the greatest decision I ever made, or I was put the same. <laughs> and then Valentine's Day, so you're dealing with Valentine's Day, you're dealing with teenagers, you're dealing with hormones, the class is mostly girls, and candy. What could go wrong, right? And I fell in love with teaching that day. Within 15 minutes, I knew this was what I wanted to do for many years to come. So that's the day I found out that why I was here. I wouldn't have made those moves and just did it and made those changes. I honestly don't feel I'd be here talking to you all today. And this was my mentality after the doctor told me what was going to happen five years ago if I didn't change my life. I chose to get to work. And I love this quote from the Martian. At some point, everything's going to go south on you. You can either accept that, or you can get to get to work, right? I always tell it to my students. When it's time to get to work, I always tell them, it's time to get to work. You need to get to work. You want to get to work, so let's get to work. Sounds mundane? Every time I do that with my kids, what do they do? They get to the same mentality here. So when life threw me those curveballs, I chose to get to work. You can either accept your fate, or you can get to work. My mom got sick. Uh, I could have chose to, okay, well, we'll just get this done, or I can get to work. Where I got her some of the best medications I could, and got her blood pressure monitors, and breathing machines, whatever we need to do for her to get over that pneumonia. Because when you're 78, and you have pneumonia, it takes months to recover from that. It's not like when you're 30 or 40, where your body heals a little quicker. So again, get to work. And this is what I did less to move more. I lost the weight, I kept most of it off, ate in moderation, walked two miles a day, checked my calories, four an hour, cut out the fried foods, limited desserts. And I know that's a tough one, but college students limit alcohol and um, eating the right foods. It's not easy to change your life, but if you can do it. Anybody here can do it. A mighty man can conceive and believe it will achieve that he comes to know. This is good as still eat. Now, do I eat this stuff every day? No. But once in a while, you gotta have that cheat meal. You gotta have fun. Because I still love a good meal, but it's just having that moderation. But again, happiness to me. You know, it's like should this goofy tattoo. But that to me was happiness. Doing something epic to the fact that I made it to be 40 years old. And when you guys hit those milestone birthdays, find a great way to celebrate. Also went to Vegas. And also doing something a little unconventional. Uh, when I had the um, nonprofit in Kentucky, um, a business partner and I, we went out there. And this is the most random thing. What are those little guys? <laughs> what are they? Minions, right? So, funny thing with that, we just stopped at a random McDonald's and we found a minion. And I told Richard, let's have some fun with this. And over the next couple days as we traveled to Kentucky through Cincinnati, we stopped at every McDonald's and got every minion. It's a goofy thing, but it's kind of going on an unconventional quest and it made the trip a lot fun. But I think one of the biggest things in life that we can do, guys, and express gratitude. And there's a great quote from John Milton. Gratitude is so reverence, allowing us to encounter everyday epiphanies, the 
those transcendent moments of awe that change forever how we experience life in the world. And this is what I do every single morning when I get up. I have what's called a gratitude list, where I'm thinking, first thing I do, I don't think about, oh, no, I just made ahead, or I got to do this class, or I got to go here or go there. It's gratitude. First thing I do is, for me, myself, I thank for my family having good health, for friends, having a home, and a career. And here's the biggest thing. At the end of the day, it is a choice to be happy every morning. You choose whether you want to be happy or not. It is a choice. And you have to decide which direction you want to go to. And also enjoy what matters most. Whether that's solitude, taking a walk with a friend, floating in the pool, those are my hideously white feet on there. Because again, I'm not white, I'm not Scottish, which means I murder easily. But uh, float the pool. But also control your phone and do not let it control you. You know what I mean by that, guys? Means you're on the phone every day, you're not going on Facebook, checking this and that. Control your phone, don't let it control you. And again, this quote I talked about earlier on its own. To be happy, make other people happy. It is so much better.